This week we're taking up the topics of curriculum design and uh, following this presentation there will be another one on curriculum alignment. Uh, the two issues of course are related but they're not necessarily the same as I hope to point out. Also, uh, before we start talking about curriculum design, we need to consider the difference between curriculum design and curriculum development. Curriculum development, of course, is what we've been talking about the last several weeks. When we mention curriculum development, we're referring to uh, curriculum policy decisions that are made at the state level, the district level, sometimes even the school level. Uh, these are going to be uh, curriculum matters that deal with the aims of education, the goals of education, the selection of content in the form of curriculum standards, all of those come under the, the term, under the heading curriculum development. Uh, curriculum development, uh, if we look at our why, what, and how model, refers to the why of curriculum and the what of curriculum. But when we talk about curriculum design, we've moved into that part of the model that refers to the how of curriculum, how a curriculum actually gets implemented, uh, the components of the curriculum that are, that are arranged by teachers at the classroom level. Let's look at the components of curriculum design. There are four cornerstones, actually, the content on the one side and, and methods and instructional activities on the other side, and then uh, at the top there are objectives and then at the bottom here evaluation. And I've tried to show the relationship of these four as um, really converging in an intersection. What you see is objectives determining the evaluation that we, uh, the evaluation methods that we use. The subject matter or the content is going to determine the methods and instructional activities. But this is not just a, a case of a relationship between objectives and evaluation and content and subject matter. What I've also tried to depict for you is that the four cornerstones interact with one another. It's really a, a much more complex relationship than just uh, objectives uh, facing evaluation and content facing methods. Also, I wanted to represent um, that all of this uh, takes place in a social system. Uh, we have to take into account uh, what we know about our community, um, the school, and of course the individual students in our classrooms. I'd like to real quickly review some of the concepts that we've been using up to this point. Um, they're, they're very important when we talk about curriculum design. Design being the decisions that are made typically at the classroom level by teachers. Scope refers to um, the decisions that we make about what to include in the curriculum. Breadth um, refers to how much and uh, depth refers to the uh, level of specificity or the complexity of the curriculum that we're going to, the content that we're going to choose to include in the curriculum. Sequence refers to the uh, order of the events in the curriculum. Continuity is an elaboration on sequence. Uh, continuity makes certain that the events that we have in proper order actually tie together, that become continuous. Integration is making sure that, that all of the pieces of the curriculum fit together. Articulation is how we tie the subject matter together from grade level to grade level, that's vertical articulation, and from subject to subject within a grade level, that is the uh, horizontal articulation. And balance, of course, is, is making sure that all of these decisions um, are, are in proper balance. For example, with scope. Um, we want to make sure that, that we have proper balance between breadth and depth. Uh, with sequence, we want to make sure that we have a proper balance between making sure that we, we, we make progress developmentally through the curriculum, but that we also don't move uh, the, the, the students through the curriculum so quickly uh, or try to uh, include so much that, that they really can't master the, the skills or the subject matter. All of those are issues of balance. I'd like to look at uh, types of curriculum design now. Uh, what I'm doing in these next few slides is trying to synthesize uh, the curriculum designs that were discussed in our readings. And I've uh, narrowed them down actually to three. A subject-centered design, a learner-centered design, and a problem-centered design. First, let's look at the subject-centered design. There are, I think, four different ways to look at a subject-centered design. Um, and, and these are just terms that uh, 
I've kind of uh, either invented or have um, adapted uh, from our textbook. In the first case, subject design, what we're doing is organizing uh, the uh, curriculum, designing the curriculum that we're going to implement at the classroom level around the facts of that subject or the principles or the concepts that we think are important. In other words, we've decided what it is that we want our students to know and then we've arranged all of the activities of, of the um, uh, lesson according to those facts or concepts or principles. Now the discipline design is a little bit different. Um, this design takes its name from the methods of inquiry that are unique to that particular discipline. For example, in a biology class or in a chemistry class we might decide that it's not as important to learn the facts or to memorize the uh, principles. Rather, it's more important to master the methods of inquiry or the scientific method that is um, that, the, the, that the natural sciences are based upon. So we would emphasize the, the steps in the, the scientific process. We would emphasize uh, methods of, of collecting data, of making certain that our observations are accurate and how we would uh, validate those observations and draw conclusions based upon uh, those observations. That would of course be the, the same whether it's uh, natural sciences or social sciences. Perhaps in a history class we would emphasize the uh, methods of, of uh, historiography rather than learning the, the names and the dates and, and the places. In the broad fields design what we're doing in designing the curriculum in classrooms and in lesson plans here is we are combining two subjects and in, in making it one. For example, in the middle school we might combine language arts and social studies into one broad field or, or core subject area. Similarly, we could combine mathematics and, and science and health into one broad field or uh, core subject. Now correlation is like broad fields, we're uh, trying to bring together two subjects, but we don't really make them um, the same subject, we just make sure that, that the two teachers who are teaching the two subjects correlate their plans, uh, they coordinate them. Uh, for example, in high school, a, a high school uh, U.S. history teacher might be teaching a unit on the Civil War. Well, in a correlational design, that teacher would make plans in conjunction with the English teacher so that the English teacher was having his students read and, and uh, criti critique novels from the Civil War era. For example, The Red Badge of Courage or Killer's Angels. Uh, again, what the correlational design is, is trying to do is to make sure that the students see the relationships uh, across the subject areas. Now, the learner-centered design is a, a significant departure from the subject-centered design. In the learner-centered design, the individual student is the focal point, not the subject matter. Uh, we call it child-centered because what we're doing is making certain that the curriculum fits the child rather than the other way around. Uh, typically, in a learner-centered design, uh, what we're doing is uh, valuing a, an individual's progress more than we are whether or not a group um, uh, meets uh, specific uh, subject matter standards. Typically a learner-centered design is going to be experience-centered. Uh, we, we try to make sure that the activities that we're planning in our lesson plans um, are relevant to the uh, individual experiences that the students have had and also that they promote active learning. Typically we use a lot of constructivist uh, approaches to teaching in the learner-centered design. But the humanistic design, what we're doing is emphasizing uh, students' uh, freedom to make individual choices. Uh, typically in a humanistic design we would not have a prescribed curriculum. Students would have a lot of input into what makes up the curriculum. And then as uh, you may recall from last week when we were looking at, at theories and, and philosophies, critical pedagogy um, is, is best described as a design that uh, promotes social activism. What we're trying to get students to do is to challenge uh, certain basic assumptions that, that we're uh, uh, typically uh, prone to make in society and to, uh, to think critically uh, in ways that will um, uh, change uh, society in ways that would uh, promote uh, social justice. 
Now the problem center design is another approach. And, and usually there are um, several different ways of, of going about a problem center design. All three of them have in common uh, one um, aspect, and that is that uh, the teacher poses a problem. And then, in, as the students proceed in trying to solve that problem, what the teacher does is give the uh, students opportunities to learn those concepts or those skills that are going to be necessary in order to work toward the solution of the problem. You see, uh, the problem center design applied uh, extensively in vocational technical programs, um, both in uh, secondary schools and also in uh, voc tech programs that are uh, po uh, post-secondary. Uh, we also could apply the very same approach of problem center design in uh, either the natural sciences or the social sciences. For example, um, we could uh, uh, take one of the um, uh, water uh, sources in a community, uh, test the water in that uh, uh, stream or river or lake, and uh, uh, get some baseline data on uh, the status of, uh, of the water supply, and then pose the question to the students, how do we, how do we um, uh, improve the quality of water in this body? Uh, what, what sorts of uh, uh, social policy do we need to uh, address? What sorts of uh, uh, science do we need to know? Uh, what sorts of uh, techniques and, and technologies do we, do we need to apply in solving this problem of improving water quality for a community? Uh, similarly, we could we could take a social problem, uh, let's say uh, recidivism uh, from um, uh, uh, inmates once they leave prison and the rate in which they go back to prison. We could recognize this as a problem and then uh, begin to look at those uh, social issues and, and matters of social policy that uh, contribute to recidivism or perhaps might um, help improve um, or reduce the rate of recidivism. Uh, again, what, what we're doing is posing the problem and then letting the subject matter uh, be determined by the problem that we posed. Of course, whatever curriculum design we choose to use, whether it's a subject-centered design, a learner-centered design, or a problem-centered design, we need to give thought to how we're going to implement that design um, in a way that uh, collaborates with all of the other persons who are going to be working with us, that communicates with all of the stakeholders that have uh, some kind of an interest in, in the curriculum, and also that we make sure that uh, we have support for um, the, the design that we've uh, planned on using, that we have the materials, the technology infrastructures, that uh, all of the people that are going to be involved uh, have the appropriate professional development that we think systems, uh, that the uh, curriculum decisions that we're making are, are really systemic decisions. And also we realize that uh, any design has to be uh, implemented in an incremental uh, process. Uh, what I've tried to do in this slide is, is really just sort of outline in a matter of a few bullets uh, what our authors uh, discussed in the section on curriculum implementation. Now, what you need to do is to, when you finish with this um, slide, is move on to another PowerPoint presentation, um, the one on curriculum alignment. And uh, what I've tried to do is to outline a few of the concepts that I think are important that we, we know uh, when we try to match up uh, learning outcomes with learning objectives.